Hello everyone, this is Ivan. I am glad to see you again and today we will talk about alphabetic filtering process. And of course, we will consider uh, filtering airplane coordinates with the help of alphabetic filters. However, first of all, let's try to talk why we need to apply alphabetic filter uh, for coordinates. And uh, as you know, uh, coordinates of any moving object or vehicle is quite important uh, because uh, there are different automatic control loops which is realized with the help of different systems. Thus, we've got many different uh, guidance systems which require uh, accurate uh, coordinates of vehicle position. Uh, next. If you would like to perform navigation purpose, uh, we need to know exactly where we are. And of course, we need to know the way in which we would like to travel. And this is the basic of any navigation approach. On board of aircraft, we have uh, plenty of different systems which help us to detect uh, current airplane coordinates. Uh, first of all, it is, of course, GNSS, uh, GPS or multi-constellation GNSS with the help of different augmentation systems. Uh, however, also inertial navigation system, which uh, usually used as inertial reference system, quite often used. And in uh, the case of some emergency or malfunction of onboard position system, we, of course, can switch to position by navigation order. Uh, this is from onboard side of aircraft. From the other side, from the ground side of uh, airplane, uh, we have uh, radars, which uh, measures airplane coordinates. Then uh, we've got multi-alteration equipment, which help us to uh, use ADSB signals to track airplane location. And finally, we've got uh, a third way how we can obtain coordinates of aircraft. It is ADSB. That's why each aerospace user uh, transmits specific uh, communication system, which uh, signal which includes a uh, position report. And we can grab this data and analyze and get uh, coordinates of airplane. And the main problem of all of these sensors, which can measure airplane location from onboard side or from ground side, it is that we've got only one measurement per time. Unfortunately, we cannot have multiple measurements at one time. And in this case, uh, we cannot mix errors or accumulate errors and try to minimize it, like finding the mean value between two different measurements. And this is very common problem of any moving vehicles in navigation. Why? Because if you talk about aircraft, okay, I've got it, okay, uh, each second, we will be in different position, and we've got only one chance to measure coordinates of this airplane, because after one second or period of measurements, our aircraft will be in absolutely another position. That's why we've got only one, one chance to measure airplane coordinates. And this is a problem, because uh, in this case, we cannot apply any statistical method to uh, minimize errors. And uh, we've got uh, measured value with errors and the fault. That's why uh, different filters help to minimize errors in this case uh, if we got only one measurement. Okay. Uh, let me share you a few slides, maybe, which 
uh, be helpful here. Okay, uh, what we have in our initial position? Uh, of course, when we talk about airplane coordinates, uh, we talk about latitude and longitude. And you know that this is spherical coordinate because um, uh, latitude and longitude it is angles, in particular planes, which uh, define user location. Uh, however, in many different practical tasks in navigation, we, we can easily transform from latitude and, length, and longitude to uh, some Cartesian reference frame. As example, ECEF, uh, which is connected with the center of our Earth, and uh, then we can easily to get X, Y, and Z. However, this coordinates is not uh, not so maybe spectacular uh, for end user because uh, obtaining trajectory uh, will be related to the center of our Earth. That's why uh, usually we use some local Cartesian reference frame which indicates a plane uh, position according to the sides like north side and east side. And in this case, uh, NED or NE up it is one of the most useful. And uh, in this case, we consider maybe uh, Cartesian coordinates of airplane. It doesn't matter if it is ECEF or NED reference frame. Uh, about them, we will, about this uh, reference frame. Uh, we will talk a little bit later, and uh, today we will be more focused on alphabetic filtering process. That's why uh, uh, let's consider a particular case that uh, we have uh, constant speed and uh, zero acceleration by our measured parameter. This is uh, the main uh, input requirements for alpha beta filter. If we consider uh, airplane movement with acceleration, it should be not only alpha beta uh, and it should be alpha beta gamma filter. That's why uh, alpha beta gamma filter is uh, much more practical, pra practically used uh, for case of airplane trajectory estimation and filtering of errors, of course. However, alpha-beta is a simple case uh, of alpha-beta-gamma filter. And uh, first of all, let's talk about alpha-beta filter and then we will switch to alpha-beta-gamma filter. And uh, what I have here, I've got some coordinates of airplane X, Y or Z, it is, doesn't matter, and I've got time scale. And I've got green line here, it is true airplane trajectory. Or oh, maybe not airplane trajectory, uh, maybe a particular uh, parameter uh, distribution like X. That's why we've got linear uh, constant movement of airplane by following like behavior. And uh, we've got measurements of this projector because we've got some positioning system on board or outside of aircraft. Here, this doesn't matter. And uh, our measurements all always include some noise. And uh, this error it is uh, randomly distributed and usually it is uh, uh, normally distributed. And uh, each time when we measure a particular parameter, we've got not true value, we've got measured value. And measured value in my graph uh, will be represented as uh, stars like this one. And 
you will see that each time we've got only one measured value. Uh, when we've got the second time, we've got next measured value, and probably it will uh, continue uh, up to the end of trajectory of the aircraft. Uh, okay, uh, let's talk about uh, our measuring process step by step. First of all, uh, at time T1, we measure uh, our parameter x and we put particular value x1 measure. Uh, this index m it will mean in my mass formulas like measured value. When uh, we've got second measurements at time t2, usually sensor um, operates in a sequential, sequential process, and we've got uh, like randomly distributed, we've got, uh, sorry, not randomly, we've got uh, period periodically distributed measurements with particular period, like one second or half second, and uh, we've got measurements in such period of measurements. And uh, at time T2, uh, we've got second measurements of uh, value X, which will be X measured to. Uh, what we can do if we have got two measurements? Okay, we can calculate velocity of airplane by particular uh, axis. If we talk about x, we can easily count this velocity, like difference between uh, measured values related to difference between time or period between measurements. And we will have velocity. If we've got measurements in uh, meters, and if you've got time in seconds, you will get uh, velocity in meters per second. Then we can use measured velocity to predict airplane location at time t3. How we can do it? Quite easily. We can uh, make assumption about linear motion of airplane, and we can easily just uh, count uh, changes in particular axis and add it to the previous measured coordinate. And in our case, x extrapolated or predicted, it is the same in this idea. That's why x3 extrapolated will be equal x2 measured plus velocity, which we count, uh, multiply with the time period between measurements. Okay, uh, time period we can count like t3 minus t2. And we will get extrapolated value. And extrapolated value in my graph uh, is marked as a uh, blue circle. Next, we've got measured value. Okay, it's quite mm -hmm. useful, I think, because at time t3, in this case, we've got two values, not one. We've got extrapolated value and we've got measured value then we can minimize errors quite easily by counting the mean value between uh, extrapolated and measured value, which we called filtered value. That's why uh, this uh, orange box, it will be filtered value or result of filter. That's why filter will build a model of extrapolation of data, then use extrapolated data 
and measured the data to count future events. And in this case, we minimize uh, errors of our measurements. Why? Because we uh, we've got two two values. We've got extrapolated and measured, and we can minimize it uh, quite easily by finding mean value, or can be much more complicated a little bit if we use percent percentage of mean value. And in this case, we can uh, count difference between measured value and extrapolated, and divide this uh, difference uh, at particular percentage. And, of course, we can uh, use guidance of this percentage with the help of coefficient alpha. And, uh, and here you can see exactly that alpha beta filter includes two coefficients, alpha and beta. And alpha coefficient will be, will, will be used as a coefficient which tune filtered value between measured and extrapolated value. It can be like 30%, it can be 40%, it can be different uh, different size of this coefficient, depending on result of measurement. And uh, finally, filtered value, we can uh, count by the following formula, also quite easy. Uh, okay, that's why filtered, it will be XF, uh, third value will be equal extrapolated value, third one, this one, plus alpha, which we multiply uh, with the difference or distance of this difference between measured and extrapolated value. That's why uh, filtered value is equal extrapolated value plus alpha multiplied with the difference between values. Uh, when we use beta coefficient, we use beta coefficient for guidance by velocity because at the next step, we need to use also velocity. And in this case, beta, it will be different in velocity. It will be coefficient which uh, we use to guide velocity from step to step. That's why third velocity will be equal second velocity plus uh, difference between measured and extrapolated value divided time by time period, it will be difference, it will be like velocity, velocity difference. And uh, we will multiply this velocity difference with the coefficient beta. That's why, that's why beta guide or tune velocity for uh, particular values. That's why alpha coefficient related to coordinates, beta coefficient related to velocity. And uh, let uh, rewrite all of these formulas to one like uh, formulas to in uh, like iterative form, which we can apply time to time for each uh, measurement. That's why First of all, we need to count extrapolated value. It is blue circle. Uh, then, with the help of uh, extrapolated value, we can reach filtered value. And then also we, we need to estimate velocity because uh, velocity we need uh, at each step for extrapolation. And step by step, we've got 
uh, filtering process. Uh, next, uh, at the fourth time, we will use filtered value and uh, measured value at second time to get extrapolated value at fourth time. Then we've got measured value, and then we've got filtered value. Uh, at the next stage, we use two filtered values at third and fourth time to predict or extrapolate value for time t5. Then we've got measured time, measured value, and we've got filtered value. And then we can continue it step by step uh, until uh, the whole trajectory of airplane will not be reached. That's why, one more time, it's quite easy. Uh, first two steps of filtering, we cannot do anything. At the first step, we just get this value and hold for further consideration. At the second step, we can estimate only velocity of airplane. And beginning from the third step, we will begin filtering, because we can build extrapolation uh, and filtering. Extrapolation, filtering. Extrapolation, filtering. Extrapolation, filtering, extrapolation, filtering, and so on. What about alpha beta coefficients? Because here it is the main. And uh, there are many different cases which alpha and beta will be useful. Uh, I would like to present you two, uh, two most useful cases. First case, um, use the following formulas for estimation alpha and beta coefficient. In this case, alpha can be counted as following, and it depends on iteration, or it depends on how often we use, or how long we use our alpha beta filter. And at first time, our alpha coefficient will be will have variable value like approximately near one, uh, and then will be reduced. The idea of that that at the beginning, uh, if I come back next, at the beginning, our uh, filtered value should be located how much possible closer to measured value. That's why based on that it will be like 85% uh, from extrapolated value. That's why in this case 85% will be here and only 15% will be from measured value. It means that filtered value will be close to the measured value. Why? It makes sense, because, uh, because we do not have like, like enough learning sample to get, uh, to get precisely extrapolation. After some particular time of working, like uh, like 100 of measurements, our extrapolation will be much more accurate than at the beginning. That's why in this case our alpha coefficient uh, begin extremely reduced and it will be like in opposite 10% from measured value. That's why uh, after 100 measurements, our filtered value will be closer to the extrapolated value. Because extrapolated value 
will be much more accurate than in the beginning. That's why the idea of uh, this alpha coefficient formula uh, is the following, that at the beginning we've got uh, our filtered value closer to the measured value, and later, when we've got enough uh, learning sample, uh, like maybe more than 50, uh, we can be more closer to the estimate extrapolated value. The idea of a better coefficient is the same. Uh, it also iterate iteration uh, sensitive formula. However, here we've got t, which is uh, time period between measures. That's why if you talk about uh, periodic measurements and time period is constant in seconds, uh, this better will have the following form. However, if time period will be different, it means that at each iteration uh, we've got better sensitive to time period. Uh, as an example, in case of ADSB, we've got multiple gaps in data, and in some time we can lose, for example, one or two uh, measurements, and it causes that time period between measurements will be different. And in this case, coefficient beta uh, will be sensitive to time period, and uh, uh, and it will be less if uh, our time period will be uh, much more larger than uh, for small time period. And in this case, maximum value for beta it is 15%, and then it will be reduced. And also we can uh, see that uh, the speed of reducing of beta coefficient in comparison with alpha much more uh, larger, much more larger, yeah. Uh, another case, how we can count alpha beta coefficient, you can find it in my uh, article, or in this another source. In this case, uh, alpha beta coefficient, much more uh, connected with uh, uh, a plane like performance and in this case alpha is counted with the following formula and beta is counted with the help of alpha and if you talk about alpha beta gamma filtering gamma includes beta and alpha coefficients and alpha is counted with the help of dumping coefficients which including tracking index, and tracking index depends on time period, uh, guidance error, and error of measurements. That's why uh, this case of alpha and beta coefficient calculation is uh, much more uh, depend on errors of uh, airplane guidance and measuring X. And uh, finally, if you use first case of alpha beta coefficient calculation, errors of alpha beta filtering can be counted as the following uh, by following formulas. And uh, here are errors of uh, estimating airplane velocity. And uh, here is the graph in case of uh, standard deviation of uh, squared value of standard deviation is equal to 10 meters. And we've got a period of measurements in one second. All of these formulas uh, I've got from quite old, old book. 
uh, about automatic uh, uh, data processing in uh, air traffic control system. Uh, that's why uh, up to now this formula is uh, still useful and uh, and uh, helpful for us. Okay, and finally, uh, I would like to represent you alpha beta filter filter and process uh, in form of algorithm because later I would want to to consider with you example of how it works. Uh, that's why algorithmic representation uh, will be helpful for you. As any algorithm, we will start from start box and then uh, we will go to the first iteration of our alpha beta filter. Then we've got input. Our first input will be method value and time of measurement. Because without time, we cannot do anything. If it is next, we will be in the switch. Uh, where we will compare if iteration is the first one. If yes, we will just filter the value, first one, make uh, equal to the first measured value. And then we will go to increment of our iteration and come back to the input. And in this case, we will, we will have the second input and the first switch will direct us to the another option and we will be at the second switch and here we will check if it is the second step of our uh, alpha beta filter yes it is and we will go through the switch down and in this case also we cannot do nothing we just need to make filtered value equal to measured value. However, we can count velocity of airplane by particular coordinate. Next, uh, going next uh, to our increment and come back to input box. And uh, next we will have a third uh, measured value then we will check first switch, we've got no, then we will check second switch, no, and we will go to the uh, option where i will be more than one. More than two should be here. Here we've got a mistake, I think. However, in logic of uh, coding, it will work, because first of all, we'll be checked uh, conditions which will be before the uh, following one. And if we, if our condition will be true, we will count alpha beta coefficients by using uh, these formulas, case one. Of course, you can use case two. However, uh, I prefer in my examples use two case one. Then we can count extrapolated value because everything that we need we already have at the third stage. That's why we, we, we've got uh, previous filtered value plus previous velocity and uh, we need to multiply in a time period between uh, uh, current and previous measurement. Then we can get filtered value. Uh, in this case, we've got extrapolated value plus uh, coefficient alpha. We need to multiply with the difference by measured and extrapolated value. And uh, finally, we can estimate velocity. Velocity also uh, we count as uh, previous velocity plus coefficient beta multiply with the difference in velocities. Finally, we estimate errors 
by x and by velocity and then go to the next measurement. And this process we will continue until we will not reach final point of iteration or tracking of a plane. And uh, all other measurements will be uh, all other measurements will be uh, go through the, this red side of these algorithms until we will not reach final iteration and in this case we will go to the final switch and uh, if i will be equal to the final end uh, iteration uh, we will uh, present matrices of uh, filtered value, extrapolated value, velocity and errors that also quite useful if you talk about next uh, data processing, for example, in navigation purposes. Uh, quite important that extrapolated value uh, have highly important rate uh, for other uh, like data processing sy systems. As an example, if you talk about radar tracking of airplane or other vehicle tracking system, uh, we need to extrapolate airplane location at the next period of time and it will be used for example for collision avoidance because we know location of each user and if we can predict where we will be in the next time we can uh, compare uh, our extrapolation and if trajectory is crossing it means that it, it will be some dangerous situation and we need to avoid it. That's why extrapolated values play also an important uh, role uh, in different like subsystems in an airplane or in the ATC side, in the ground. Also uh, quite important uh, extrapolated value for trajectory uh, like detection. Uh, of course, if you talk about ADSB, everything is clear because we've got airplane identification code and all measurements we can associate with particular airplane. Uh, however, in case, uh, for example, if uh, if you talk about primary radar data, in this case we've got only X and Y of airplane location at particular Cartesian uh, frame, and that's all. And we don't know if it is this aircraft or if it is another aircraft. And uh, in this case, uh, extrapolated value play significant role for graph airplane trajectory because we've got multiple aircraft in the space and we don't know identification of aircraft and extrapolated value can be used for uh, graph airplane trajectory or graph all the trajectory of particular airplane data points together to get the whole trajectory. That's why extrapolated value it is a very useful outcome of uh, any uh, filter which can be used in um, aviation. Of course you can tell uh, that uh, this is alpha beta filter it is quite simple one because uh, airplane uh, it is highly dynamic object and usually it uh, moves with acceleration and velocity of course is not constant 
during the takeoff or landing or even during the enrolled phase. That's why uh, Alpha Beta Filter is a much more simplification model of filtering. And in most cases, uh, Alpha Beta Gamma Filter is used. And uh, the idea of Alpha Beta Gamma Filter is the same. Uh, however, we need to add uh, guidance by alt uh, acceleration and uh, gamma coefficient try to guide changing or tuning by acceleration axis and uh, in this case we've got the same uh, algorithm however we need to add additional uh, additional line in our tree of algorithm and we will begin from the uh, fourth uh, iteration because third one we will need to count acceleration uh, and only when we've got acceleration uh, we can count uh, acceleration part and we can add it to our formula however uh, alpha beta gamma filter we will discuss maybe later in special videos uh, well, uh, when we can use alpha beta filter, <clears throat> we can use it only into the linear part of airplane trajectory. If we talk about ATC service, uh, mostly we can talk about ATC service which uh, which operate at enrolled phase. Uh, of airplane flight and in this case most flights uh, are performed by linear trajectory because we've got flight rules and all airplanes uh, should follow these flight rules and these flight rules is linear that's why uh, working in this side that's why alpha beta filter can be useful if you talk about airplane movement during the enrolled phase between two waypoints uh, within particular network of flight roads. That's why alpha beta filter is useful. Uh, however, in particular restriction uh, within particular like condition. Uh, probably that's all that uh, I would like to tell you about Alpha Beta Filter. If you have any questions, uh, I will be glad to answer. Uh, thus, uh, thank you very much for watching me. If you have any questions related to Alpha Beta Filter, I will be glad to answer. And of course, at the next video, uh, we will try to um, count all of that uh, with the help of alpha beta filter and try to see how it works uh, in uh, real airplane data and is it useful or maybe alpha beta gamma filter will be useful that's why thank you very much for watching hope to see you next time